Anyway, going to move on to the next semifinals, which is Yogg and Drone. Yogg's Doth and Drone versus someone else. You guys can see it, I cannot. Oh, yeah. Me Machine guys. Manu and Julian. That is the next game. Where are they? Oh, they're with us. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be another interesting game. Oh my goodness, this is going to be super high-level games, but we'll see what happens. I'm just thinking, super high-level games on Cold Snap. We could be here for another hour on that alone. Hmm. Alright, so... Unfortunately, I didn't really see much of Yogg-Sothoth and Drones... Oh wait, we saw all of it, what am I saying? What happened to those games again? That was Iced Coffee was... Right, the failed cheese attempt to Avalanche, that's what it was. So you know they can deal with that. So, you still there? I'm here. Okay. Any thoughts? I mean, machine kind of Drone and Yogg. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Drone and Yogg. Oh, okay. That's quick and decisive. Any particular reason? Um, th they're not playing on this map, right? They should pick another. No, no, no. They're on Cold Snap. Uh, am I in the same game as you? Yeah. They're going uh, to be on they're Cold playing Snap. Titan Duel. Uh... No, 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 no. It's Cold Snap is the first match of every of the semifinals. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Um, yeah, I think uh, just going on Elo, but also Drone is used to playing big ma big games. He can do the. He can do the super long game. Yeah, but he how oh, to call it? Um, he doesn't make uh, all those uh, little mistakes. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Although, admittedly, those little mistakes on both sides were the thing that contributed to the length of the game. Yeah, Princey and... Um, Norm. Norm, yeah. It's less likely that we'll see anything like that from uh, Drone or Yok. Good. Because I'd like us to finish today. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, I didn't really uh, didn't expect thought of this that. tournament today. I didn't expect that. Nobody this expected. Early. I expected that to happen in the finals, or maybe bronze match. Uh. That is odd. Anyway, back to the game. So we have drone and Yog. Oh, doing the same split setup. Going to the north, Yog to the uh -huh. south. Manu and Julian, on the other hand, have not chosen where to build, where to start up. They're also not choosing their factory. Yogg going for light vehicles in the south, which makes sense. That is the south play. Until the lake gets smashed open. I mean, once the ice gets broken in the lake or whatever. This is, I guess this is ice in the lake. No real material properties, so I can't tell. But it looks like it's supposed to be ice. It doesn't have any reflection right Yeah, now. I'm not sure what it is. Well, I think it's ice. It just, they didn't... This is an earlier map, so they didn't have the reflection textures. So they didn't use that to make uh -huh. it look like ice. Like, say, an iced coffee, which does that. Oh. That should be a thing you could do to polish up this map a little bit. Anyway. So we got Julian in the north and Manu, Manu in the where? south. He okay, so starts forward. He, but, um, double split. What do you think of it? Yeah, that's interesting. Should be Ma really Wow, cool. Manu, Manu's going very forward. Yeah, yeah, you, that you is can do risky. Now it's a significant distance. Um, you get quicker access to the maxes in front of you, but there are not that many to start with. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, I guess it's not it's, that risky then. I can. It makes sense if the other player starts in the center. Mm hmm. Because it's still very vulnerable, or very uh, hard to 
expand backwards if you... Well, at this point, because the center is open, droning and Yogg yeah. can just cut through that, come around back, like you said. That's, that's, that's a worrisome thing. Point. But you can speed drone uh, starts out with a constructor. Um, also, the wind is awesome in the top left location. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, holy crap! One to two point five. Yeah, that is perfect. Always go for wind there. No reason not to. And now coming around the back is one hell of an starts. efficient. Uh, will it get it? Will it get it? It will yeah, get the it LT. Will, will it totally. get the constructor? No, nope. it won't. But it can get it the Mike of the Max. Yes, it will. It takes Perfect. advantage of that and does not suicide in the mechs. That and is very nice. Hard. That That is something which I do not see enough players do. I've been trying to do myself. I don't see enough players do is when they're about to kill something like a mech or a wind generator with a weak unit that has the range to avoid the death explosion, getting out of the way yeah, right before you do kill this. it. That was a good play by Drone. I'm glad to see that. I don't see enough players do that. Uh, it just takes a lot of APM. It does, but it's definitely worth doing, especially that early in the game. You should watch uh, drones uh, FP vods. Drones making FP vods? I don't know that. Yeah. Huh, okay. Actually, no. I have. I didn't know about that. I just didn't realize they were still making FP vods. And another couple metal extractors taken out. Very nice rating by drone. Very well done. Yogstoth going for a frontal assault, but at this point, Manu has been distracted. Their commanders in the back. They have no defenses up front. They have one Lotus, but so what? Well, the good thing is, you can see Drone has three constructors taking on all the three clusters that were available from start location. Now he can, he's taken it, he can switch to full unit production and put his commander on uh, support of his factory. Yeah. And he will, can put out a lot of units. Yeah, the they, other team has right barely any equipment at all. They didn't, don't have this many, many uh, constructors and they don't have as many maxes. And the reclaim is not good if you don't have any uh, constructors. Because no. although Drone lost uh, quite a lot of glaives with all these raids, he, uh, there's well, no way to make use of, of those uh, wrecks. There's not a lot of glaives to work with. I mean, they destroyed a lot of stuff, and there's only like two glaives, or two or four glaives that died, and four darts. That was really efficient, all things considered. So this yeah, Yoke point... is really doing well. <laughs> They're raiding so hard, they're raiding harder than. I've, yeah, I mean, Yogg is doing the more frontal assault, which is getting a little bit harder. There's more defenses as they go. No, never mind. What am I saying? Frontal assault. Forget that. I see the back. Yeah. Rear Scorchers. There's a flank. That's the more important thing. And the frontal assault on top of this, or at least the frontal distraction, which actually, the Madness Commander, oh, if it weren't a battle commander, I would say that it was dead. But it's a battle commander, so the Scorchers can't kill it. There's not enough to do so. It's also upgrading, so that doesn't help. So yeah, that that commander will not be attacked because Yogg stuff. Uh, that's a not lot of Rokos. Uh, that's good. Oh yeah, wow, super early Rokos too. But that makes a lot of sense, especially since there hasn't. I mean, there's been the bandits coming up. Actually, it doesn't make as much sense as I thought. But given that Yogg has, I mean, given there's been enough raiding going on, and there already are, there are still Glaives coming out. So Glaive and Rokos, good mix. Mm hmm. Definitely. That's a good thing to have. Oh, the bandit's getting caught up a bit. Wow, getting killed. <laughs> oh, thanks to that choke point. Awesome. Yeah, especially when they have choke points to work with and the units can't dodge. Because that's the only thing that raiders have on, on Rokos. Their raiders have awesome. on skirmishers. You may not have known, but also Rokos have splash damage. Oh, yeah. Let's see. That's 24 ammo. Not not huge. It's like but it's, two or three units of hits. It means that if you uh, run in raiders, they clump together and they... Rokos become super effective. Yeah, that's the weird thing about that's the thing about Rokos is that you got to be careful how you use your units because the only reason Rokos are beaten by or Rokos in particular, but skirmishers in general are beaten by raiders is because raiders can dodge, and there's a slow moving projectile coming out of that skirmisher trying to kill the raiders. Yeah, no, I think this center push will kill him. There's no way they can handle this. I I agree. Manu's command is going to go down to comp snipe. I mean, the command these glaives alone are enough. A couple of roaches may, might work. Um... Yeah, if they had roaches on defense already, but they don't. There's nothing placed. I mean, Mono oh, and Julian were not expecting wasted. early raids like this. Nice which is retreat. a little surprising given that this is the fifth one or so now. But I think a lot of people... A lot of people have a hard time remembering that roaches and ticks exist. 
and that they're super yeah, useful as a comeback right. mechanism. I think people are used too much to uh, the repeat queue. Yeah, and straightforward fights. So Instead of... I have um, units, you have units, we fight. Just we making smash each the other. unit you need at the moment you need them. Um, just StarCraft style unit production. Well, StarCraft style unit production for the most part could be done by repeat queue, but it is. There is some. Yeah, I used room the old button. Uh... Well, you can't do it by repeat queue in StarCraft. You'd waste resources. But I mean, if you had repeat queue and it did work with the TA, you'd mostly use it there. But there are situations where you wouldn't. And it's just. You gotta remember that here, too. Roaches and ticks. And. Okay, Slasher coming in from the south, tearing apart Mountain's base. Julian doing a decent job defending against drones attacks though, pushing that back. The <laughs> Thug Outlaw actually working surprisingly well against the Rockos. I would expect that would be the counter, but no. On the other hand, the Slasher is tearing apart the Thugs, no problem. And double shield bot. And Drone switching over to Gunship Factory. Yogstoth switching over to Air Factory. Getting some... Well, getting some Ravens in. <laughs> getting some Ravens in. That's the Hero Scorcher there in the back. Oh. Oh, yeah, wow. And it's actually not a whole lot. It, it could cut through with not a whole lot of trouble. These it means you cannot send the constructor though. back. You need to send an army there for or a couple of units. The slashers, they know where they can push in. They know they can hit the lotuses, but yet they haven't done so. Yogstoth is not paying that much attention to this. Surprising. Whoops. That's what I wanted. There we go. That's what I wanted. Yeah, Yogstoth paying more attention to the back of their base, paying attention to their bombers, not paying attention to the front or pushing things forward as much as they could be. Which is a little bit unfortunate. And I, on the other hand, we have... Interesting. He's bombing the LT, so that is interesting. That's a good move. I mean, the Slashers can get rid of them, no problem, but this LT behind... The, they should have bombed the LT behind the power plants. That's the one thing. That's, that's a bit more valuable, but even then, it doesn't matter that much. Like bombing all of these is generally a good idea. It's a risk fee it's a risk free move, gets rid of defenses. But at this point, I don't know if it matters. I mean Julian has still a decent line. It's still hard to push through them, but Manu is basically dead. Drone is fighting the shield bots. <laughs> the sniper and And yeah, Timo Timo, that's there's a bit of a terrain bug with a yeah, the shadows are dropping because I'm zooming in and the mountain gets out of view and the shadows... I think it's an engine bug, actually. I'm not sure if it's a bug with the way that Rome terrain works. They have Rome on, I think. Fairly certain I do. I don't see why I wouldn't, but... Yeah, that's a one hell of a commander there. The Minus Commander? Battlecom, running away with flamethrower? Yuxtov's commander, he's pushing with it and it has Nanolay, so it's pushing with LTs and Resurrection. Oh, yeah, so it is. Oh! Wow, Laz just was on top of that? Yeah, they could just res the factory. Why not? Okay, Julian's thrown in the towel. Manu's the only one left, and Manu taking Julian's stuff and losing it. Well, that's that's game. That's, I mean, just been game for a while. Eight minutes! Mercifully short. It's better than the hour Four game minutes. of... Uh, and Manu digging their commander into a hole. Trying to see how far down they can go. Giant hole in the middle of the map. Slowly pulling everything down with them. How deep is that hole in there? That's a pretty deep hole. Oh. Anyway. Uh, but uh, Yoxitov has more build power. Well, oh, well, Yogstoth is so he can. Um, oh yeah, Yogstoth is trying to pull it back up. Although they're getting burned <laughs> in the process, but still, yeah, they're pulling that. Nope, your commander's not going in a hole. Not today. No, I, I wanted my hole. Still a pretty deep hole. Anyway, now that I've made the stream compression just completely go haywire, <laughs> let's get back to the game. As Manu's commander forced up above ground to die. Ooh. Ouch. Just firing squad waiting for it above ground. And that's game. So game one goes to Yogstoth and Drone with a nice dramatic finish. 
quite decisively, I might yes. add. Although I gotta say, that firing line thing was pretty amusing. I'm gonna get a camera angle on it. But anyway, we're going on to game two, where Mean Machines gets to choose the map. Not sure what map it's gonna be, though. But it will be a map. They cannot opt in the middle of the tournament to play a completely different game that does not have maps. It is going to exist. So, next map is... What is the next map? Game two is... Oh, come on. Well... Hmm. What maps do Meme Machines players typically go for? And I imagine they probably also go for the large stuff like Comic Catcher. Maybe they pay, take uh, Imperial Winter or something. Is Imperial Winter even featured? I don't know. I think so. Oh, apparently that Avalanche game came through in the match comments that they picked the wrong commander to cheese with on top of everything else. <laughs> Ouch. That's unfortunate. Oh, I... So it would appear, yeah, they're picking. I'm gonna double check that map though. I'm curious. I, I meant a nuclear winter, by the way. Oh, nuclear one. winter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's both winter. That map is indeed featured. So that could be that is legal. That could be picked. I can't remember seeing that on zero. I think I've seen it once in zero K. Seen it a lot in Nauta. A very common one in the Nauta cast I've done. That's a lot. It's a common map in zero K. But in the big team games. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like Cold Snap, though. Although Cold Snap's kind of like DSD. Actually, Cold Snap is basically DSD snow version. Now that I think about <laughs> it. Icy Run? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Wow, okay, well, I guess they have a plan. But this map is bizarre. Man, that's gonna that's gonna really make it hard for me to figure out joke maps to put in for the match threes that don't actually happen. So when I put in my cast and I put map three and I put a map. That map is never a map that has been played in the tournament. I always make sure that the map I threw in is not a map anyone chose. I mean it's a bit of a subtle hint, but still, I usually pick Icy Run at some point. And now Because they've legitimately chosen Darn. Icy Run as the map. All right, well, anyway, this map, as you can see, is very low econ. It is a map that relies on overdrive, and it is a map that relies on a lot of early game play. That is it's also a map that relies a lot on uh, defenders. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You need to take the center. You need to take it fast, and you need to take it decisively. And then you just spend the next half hour trying to drag out the game, not letting anything budge in center. I see aircrafts, I see cloakies, I see cloakies. And Manu has yet to pick their factory. I think you could do a... This is a great map for a airdrop cheese. Most, a lot of the maps we've seen so far have been, but no one's going for it. If Manu goes for gunship... Nope, spiders. A good Spider. factory, solid choice oh. in this map, but I do think the gunship chart would be kind of interesting. Have people not been reading the complaint threads in the forums? Like, there's been a, there's been a bit of an uproar about this idea of there being this unbalanced strategy, using gunship. Yeah. <laughs> Forever wanting to go for gunship nap. Well, 
They're not going to do that. Alright, so we are starting, and I forgot to switch the music over. And drone, Loki. Y'all going for quick swifts. We have no air coming from the western, the eastern players, and nothing out of the ordinary. This is a pretty typical start. Early raider, early constructor. I would say this normally, except this is not a normal map. But then again, the players are expanding pretty fast. Well, the western players are. Manu, not so much. Julian sort of is, but Yogstoth is... Sorry, Drone's going ahead pretty quick. Yogstoth, not so much. Yogstoth is setting up a Caretaker. Probably going to go heavy overdrive afterwards. And early attempts to raid are unsuccessful for Drone. As Drone moves further south, continues to expand, and from there tries to defend. These glaives are kind of mm. doomed, though. What is this glaive doing? It didn't see the constructor. Ooh, and it sees Manu, a warrior. Look at Manu's vision. They have they see everything. They see that there's swifts. They see the center of the map. They're playing spiders. I guess where spiders work nicely, of course, is basically map hacks. <laughs> Fleas are map hacks. They're however very weak, but if you can if you can't find them, they're map hacks. Though it looks like Drone found one of them and is trying to hunt the rest of them down. Found another one, but didn't quite spot it in time. Still, drones expanding nicely. Yogg's Yogg's continuing to expand as well. Now moving into that part of the game, and setting up an airplane plant on top of that looks like overall it is going to be a fairly interesting setup. Ooh. Lost one glaive to the warrior. Well, at this point. Oh, with the paralyzed uh, spider and a warrior, that could be dangerous. Oh, that's but death. It's a jumping commander, so... Uh... It is, but the problem is the glaives can't do anything. This entire area is going to be torn apart. The only thing that can be done is the uh, bomber. The bomber is the uh, only choice, and it's going for the oh, venom. Oh, that's a good one, actually. That's a very good one. And it hits... Oh. Well, but the warrior the dies But the spider anyway. paralyzed uh, its own warrior. Yep. Friendly fire. Don't know. Not friendly. Yeah, it's not friendly. I think it was trying to go for the bomber, and then it ended up missing or ended up splashing. And it hit the warrior in the process. But no, now Drone's but commander has level one jumperino with a particle beam. That's nice. Yeah, that's death for the Wenham. And with that, that... Wow, there's and not a whole lot of And when you lose your first like, two of uh, relatively expensive units so early, that on this map is a big deal. I think... Well, the Redback's going to be a bit more defense, a bit more insurance, but there's nothing beyond that. There's no attack defense whatsoever. There aren't a lot of they units. They cannot deal, really deal with those uh, shadows. The bombers. Yeah, the ravens are just coming around everywhere. There's not much that can be done, honestly, other than something really risky. They have to push forward with... They need to invest uh, quite a lot more in anti-air to that, stop uh, that the That too, yeah. I think they need to add, I think, one or two more uh, Jetros. Anti-air and artillery. I think the only things they really have that are going for them. Or they could, they could also them. add... Um, uh, more defenders. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's that's the true for every situation. Big look, because you... <laughs> they survives. Metal no. Extractor does not. And did... All the gremlins... No, the gremlins are getting knocked away. 600 metal gremlins, gremlins don't kill a... Uh, 300 metal bomber. Nope. Which is weird. <laughs> they should. No. And Scythe not. coming in for drone. I mean, they're attacking on... All angles and the glaive coming from drone along the north as well. This is uh, uh, not expected. Yogg's not jump, jump. Oh wait, they couldn't jump. They were half away from jumping. It's a uh, setback. Yeah, smash the venom though. So there was no continued attacks afterwards. But it's not that big of a setback. They can destroy Manu's commanders. Okay, actually, that is that big of a setback because this is a tiny well, map with very little economy. The, his command, he has three three bombers. Now he, he needs more. He needs a uh, fourth one. Yes, there's three thousand health. Although they might just go for two waves. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like that's yeah, what they're going to do. There's no healing Combination around. with the Scythe. Ah, this, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's it. And the Scythe <laughs> even lives. Wow. Nice. Nice. So Drone is going to be taking I that. for an eye, huh? Well, taking that and running. At this point, they have the economic advantage. Manu and Julian are behind economically and militarily. And 
Yogstoth just needs to repair that air, and I think at that point they're probably going to go for another comm snipe on Julian's commander, which is going to be a free three metal or three bomber comm snipe. Yep. He needs one more, and he has it. And that scythe, if it goes around, if it, especially if it goes around to where the gremlins are and takes them out, that's going to be handy. But it looks like we're still waiting on the remaining two ravens. One raven left, needs to repair, and there we go. All those juicy, expensive spiders. That too, but I think I think the commander is going to be the first priority. Well, bombing those 200 and 300 metal spiders is also very nice with uh, shadows. And it looks like we have... Well, actually, no. We are, you're right. There's going to be spider destruction. That is going to be the first target. And now he can also start to bomb uh, Jetros. Yeah, that's the thing. It fades them out. You need, uh, I think, about... Two and a half, three times the investment in uh, Shadows. Yeah, I should point out though that this map, it's fully bot pathable, or almost fully bot pathable. There's very few areas where only spiders can go. So it's not like Colokibots don't have a chance, it's just that spiders have a bit more flexibility. A bit. And a scythe in here, drone sees exactly what's going on. And they know that they can attack. They're going to attack that metal extractor and they're going to take it out. Which means they're going to be able to destroy pretty much all of <laughs> Julian. Well, Julian's economy is dependent on their commander now. Like their commander is basically their economy at this point. Where is it? That's a better question. Wait. Yeah, it's right here. Not is it? Yes, it's getting gone for and Julian loses their... No. No, they don't. <laughs> Julian almost loses their commander. They take out one of the bombers before it kills them, though. But another wave is going to be required to kill that commander. That commander is lucky to be alive. Also, uh, Drone makes good use of his commandery, that particle beam. He just keeps skirmishing with it against well, Zeus's. That's exactly what you need to do. And Scythe's continuing to come in. Drone losing that Scythe, though. Lost it to a few fleas, but still did some decent job. Decent work. See, it went up here and just... From that one area down here. One kind of nice thing about snow maps is the footprints are very visible, so you can easily see where stuff is going. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it came from down here, because there's a footprint leading all the way up. And the glaive is coming to get rid of the fleas. This should be no problem. And afterwards, that lotus, I think the glaives can take it out. I think. If that goes, the factory goes, and I think that'll be game. And at this point, Yogstoth looks like they're setting up for yet another bombing run. The commander is not yet fully repaired. Two bombers would be enough. Yep. Ah, but maybe he might uh, decide to bomb the Jesus. I should point out also that Drone is reclaiming Manu's commander and is about halfway done doing so. And yeah, they're bombing the Zeus's. Also a good choice. Definitely worth getting rid of those. I mean, now that the gremlins are very nearly all gone, there's like two of them. Oops. Yeah, there's just these two. That's it. There's not much more to be said, and there's this, the glaives coming in here, trying to go to the factory, not able to do, well, getting distracted by the, getting distracted by the fleas, not going to stop them too much, though. Continuing to hit the factory, and that should be a dead Ring factory. Ring around a rosy. Because that Zeus is taking forever to build. Those fleas are a real nuisance, but no more. That is all they can do, is noose. I apologize, it is 6 in the morning. I may start neologizing. It happens. Clogobot factory down! Julian has no factory, Manu has no economy, and Julian about to lose their commander as well because... just for good measure. Down it goes. <laughs> that commander was... Pretty much the last thing that Manu and Julian had. And with that, Drone and Yogg's death will take this game. You were exactly right. You made a good call early on. Yeah. Although, interestingly, Manu and Julian never had the overdrive setup either. Drone and Yogg, they know how to play oh, this map very They didn't have clearly. any resources to do it with That's to start true. And they lost a lot of units to uh, Shadows. And no defenses for it either. But yeah, that's the thing is, Drone and Yogg's death, they know how to play this map. Clearly. Very clearly they know how to play it. They had everything set up just right. I wonder if you're better off with um, spamming defenders instead of uh, five uh, Jetros. The map is so small, you 
Probably, You'll hit the yeah, ball most the likely anyway. <laughs> the defender defense range is a little over half. Actually, if you put it in the center of the map, it pretty much covers top to bottom. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, defenders would be a great option. But that's beside the point, because now we're going into the bronze match with Manu and Julian versus Princey and Clone. Yep, so bronze match is up next. And Timo got the spelling right, too. Well done. 